Hey, hey, hey. Time for another out-of-this-world story from our space. Anybody else prefer their love without all the loop-de-loops? And maybe one in which you don't need a barf bag. Today on our space, we're experiencing some serious turbulence. I'm new to Reddit, and I've been reading stories, trying to find if anybody has experienced the same thing as I have. Inspired by others, I've decided to open up and share my own journey, hoping it might offer solace or insight to someone else. Perhaps through sharing, some positivity can emerge from the struggles I've faced. A little backstory for context for the story. I turned 18 and left home to move to a rural blue collar town. I started working in the trades and ended up making a decent amount of money and was able to buy myself a decent place with a three car garage for all my toys. I'm not afraid to admit that I treated myself. I played hard because I worked hard. I didn't grow up with a lot. My family struggled, so when it came into some money, I helped them out, paid their bills, and helped them get out of debt. My family and I are close, but in no way am I perfect. There was a point in time where I hit rock bottom. I became addicted to opiates because of an injury I received at work. I basically blew my knee out and had to get surgery. I was out of work for a good chunk of time. After I healed, I went to work, but I was good and medicated. It started with opiates, and then I mixed in some cocaine. I was in pain. I felt lonely. I was unhappy. I was working my butt off. But my family really helped me out and brought me back. I was a really low point in my life and they dragged me out of that hell. Shortly after getting sober, I was about 23, I met my future ex. I'll call her Kelsey. When we first met, she was dating someone else at the time. She had a long-term boyfriend who happened to work in the same town as me. We actually worked in the same camp, but because this camp is so big, I had never actually worked closely with him. Even though we didn't work closely together, we had mutual friends. One of our mutual friends was having a barbecue, and Kelsey just happened to be in town that day and came to the barbecue. I'll be honest, at the barbecue she was flirting with me and I shamelessly flirted back. She texted me after that. At first it was harmless with maybe some dirty jokes here and there. I could tell she was trying to get me to bite. But I didn't until the day she told me she broke up with him. When I had my off weekend, I'd drive three hours to see her and stay at her place for the weekend to get my nut in. Let me tell you, she did not disappoint. And looking back, she was mentally unstable, but I gave her a little spice, and I liked it. Yeah, whatever. For the most part, our relationship thrived over the next four years, albeit with a recurring pattern of being on and off again. Whenever I went out of my way to do something special for her, we'd get into this huge fight, and she'd break up with me. But the breakup didn't last very long because she'd still come over to F me, and then she'd plead for reconciliation shortly after that. Honestly, this is just how it was, and it felt normal to me and it honestly felt like a joke. I just never took it seriously when she broke up with me because I knew within the week she'd be over at my place seducing me. She was crazy and it drove me wild in the best of ways. After a while though, and after talking to her recently, she told me that she broke up with me because she was ashamed about the fact that she cheated on me just as she had been cheating on her previous boyfriend. She told me she was basically addicted to it. She loved the attention. She loved the chase. And honestly, she became a bit of an addiction too. I think a part of me didn't believe that I deserved love, so I got used to the feeling of being treated like that. At one point though, I tried to put my foot down and tried to practice some self-control. This lasted for about four months. In that time, while we were broken up, I took time off work and I went and backpacked through France, Italy, Croatia, and even to Greece. I met some of the most beautiful women I had ever laid eyes on, and for a moment, I'd forgotten about Kelsey, and shocking, I know, but I was actually happy. When I got back, I started planning my next move. I was going to put my house up for sale and get out of that small town. I wanted to move somewhere warmer and just travel up north for work. But she must have smelled blood in the water because as soon as I was shopping around, she called me up and expressed a desire to reconcile, expressing earnest intentions of commitment. So much so that we delved into discussions about marriage, starting a family, and even started house hunting together. Shake my head. But everything seemed to align perfectly, and I actually believed her. This is where it all started to go really downhill. So my work is really sporadic. We have jobs that can just last anywhere from two weeks to six months. It all really depends. While I'm off work, I go on unemployment insurance. I did end up selling my place in that blue collar town and Kelsey and I ended up buying a place in the city that she lived in. But this all means that I can be away from home for at least two weeks at a time, at most maybe six weeks. If anything, I'd try to come home when I could, even if it was three days. So at one point, I come home from six weeks away. We just finished a shutdown. Worked about 10 days straight. As soon as I get back, I start getting really sketchy vibes. She starts love bombing me. She performs a certain 
act on me as soon as I walk in the door, then barbecues some steak, and then she starts a fire. We sit around that fire and finish up with a night of effing. I had a feeling she was trying to butter me up for something or hide something. She was definitely distracting me from something. We're laying in bed afterwards. It's about 2 a.m. She's about six beers deep plus a bottle of wine. She's a lightweight, so by this time she's pretty plastered. She's laying there naked, and then she mentioned that this guy, I'll call him Ned, keeps talking to her on social media. She said that he randomly reached out to her on Instagram. Right away, I'm seeing a red flag. I try to shake it off and pretend like it didn't bother me. She keeps talking about this guy and how funny he is. I'm trying to bring up other things and change the subject. She keeps bringing the topic back around to this Ned guy. She starts telling me about how Ned is so understanding, how he listens to her problems, how he gets her in ways I never could. It's like a dagger to my heart, listening to her praise another man while lying naked in my bed. But I try to stay composed, pushing down the rising tide of jealousy and insecurity. As she continues, she mentions how Ned just got out of a relationship and he has been going through a tough time lately, how he's feeling lost and alone. And then, in a moment of vulnerability, she confesses that she's been confiding in him about our relationship issues. My mind reels at this betrayal, realizing that she's been airing our private struggles to a virtual stranger. But despite the anger and hurt simmering beneath the surface, I force myself to remain calm and try to listen as she recounts their conversations. Eventually, she passed out and I instantly reached for her phone and took it to the bathroom with me so I could do some digging. Yeah, I felt guilty at first, but once I saw the messages between the two of them, the guilt was replaced with rage. I instantly wake her up and I held the phone in her face and show her the nudes they've been sending back and forth to each other, not just recently, but prior to our four month break. By this point, we had been living together for close to a year. Naturally, she breaks down and she's crying and sobbing. She's drunk and not making any sense. So I take off and go stay at a buddy's place for the night. While I'm gone, she tries calling me and texting me, but I'm not answering. She's absolutely blowing up my phone. In the morning, I go back home and find her passed out in the kitchen and she's unresponsive. Come to find out she had a full-blown panic attack, so much so that she hyperventilated so much that she ended up passing out and hitting her head on the kitchen counter. She had a mild concussion. I told her I needed to hear the truth and that's when she admitted to hooking up with Ned right before we broke up for the four months and I left on my trip. She said she thought that I was catching on to something back then, so she started to fight and broke up with me before I could break up with her. She said she hooked up with him while I was away and then realized she missed me and when I got back, she wanted to get back together. She said she only started talking to him again while I was away working recently because I was gone and she had needs. She straight up told me that she's too horny for monogamy but that she loves me and she doesn't want to lose me. Then she drops another bomb and tells me that she didn't actually break up with our mutual friend before we started dating. She just wanted to be with me so badly that she told me that she had. Honestly, I had a feeling that she was still seeing him. She said she broke up with him after a couple of months and after she knew that I would stick around. I'll be honest with you. The addict in me said that I could fix her and it also said that I wanted one more hit. That's always it. One more hit. So we did try. I told her that she needed to end things with Ned in order for this to work out. Not only that, but that she has to stay sober for me. So I saw her text him and end things. I read the text message and I saw her block him on her phone and on her Instagram account. I'm not sure why that was supposed to make me feel better. Deep down, I knew it wasn't going to do anything. We talk, and despite everything, I'm still in love with her and I'm eager to pursue our shared dreams of starting a family, getting married, and owning a home together. It's the vision I've labored tirelessly for. I'll admit, it was a lost cause, but a part of me wanted some security. I wanted this perfect little happy family. I wanted to make my parents proud. I wanted to bring the girl of my dreams home and show them just how much I turned my life around. I was a fool. Kelsey was overjoyed that I'd forgiven her and promised that she wouldn't hurt me again. In retrospect, I can't help but acknowledge my own naivety in believing her. As weeks turned into months, I started noticing small, unsettling changes. Kelsey was on her phone more often, always tilting the screen away from me. She'd get mysterious calls and texts late at night and become increasingly secretive about her whereabouts. I couldn't shake off the feeling that something was amiss. One day, curiosity got the better of me and I decided to dig a little deeper. I knew snooping wasn't the right way to handle things, but the nagging suspicion was eating me alive. I began checking her social media activity more closely, noticing she had unblocked Ned and a few other guys. I confronted her about it, but she gaslighted me making me feel like I was being paranoid. I wanted to believe her, so I brushed it off and tried to rebuild the trust, but my gut feeling was relentless. Then, one night while Kelsey was in the shower, 
I checked her phone again. This time, I found messages from multiple guys, not just Ned. They ranged from flirty banter to explicit exchanges. The final straw was a message that she sent to Ned saying she missed their last hookup and couldn't wait for the next one. It hit me like a ton of bricks. She never stopped cheating. Feeling devastated and betrayed, I took screenshots of everything and sent them to my own phone as evidence. I knew that her birthday was coming up. I knew that was my chance to get back at her. For her birthday, I had rented out this hotel room where she would come back after a night of dancing with her girlfriends. I told her I had a few things to take care of, but that I would meet her at the hotel room after. Little did she know, I had been meticulously planning a special surprise for her birthday, a surprise that would also serve as my payback. I had been hinting to everyone that I had something big planned, dropping heavy clues about a potential engagement proposal. They were all eating out of the palm of my hand. Her friends were buzzing with excitement, and Kelsey herself seemed to be over the moon. Obviously, some of the girls had spilled the beans, which was fantastic. She would walk into the room thinking this night would mark a new chapter in our relationship. I meticulously set the scene at the hotel suite. I made sure everything looked perfect. Candles, champagne, romantic decorations, the whole nine yards. Her friends gathered around, phones out, ready to capture what they believed would be the proposal moment. Kelsey's eyes sparkled with anticipation, her face glowing with excitement. I started by giving a heartfelt speech about our journey together, how much she meant to me, and how I've always envisioned our future. I had to put on the biggest acting career of my life. Instead of getting down on one knee, I pulled out some papers. Her breath hitched, and there was a collective gasp from the crowd. Kelsey took it and started to read. It was a printout of the messages between her and Ned, along with screenshots of her conversation with the other guys. Her face fell, the room growing silent as the realization of what she was reading hit her. As she was reading the papers, I told her that this is what you've been doing behind my back, cheating, lying, and betraying my trust. I watched her friend's expressions shift from excitement to shock and disgust. I told her that she didn't deserve her proposal, and that I was done with her lies and deceit, and everyone should know the truth about her. Kelsey looked at me and lunged at me like she was going to slap me, but then luckily one of her friends stepped in. She started to cry and it told her that I was done, and I walked out. I knew I had to hurry up and take the next steps to truly move on from this toxic relationship. Honestly, I hadn't really thought that far ahead at that point in time, but the very next day I contacted a buddy of mine who's a real estate agent, and he helped me start the process of selling our home. I explained the situation to him and he was understanding and professional, and started the process up relatively fast. While waiting for the house to be listed, I packed up her stuff. I called her and told her she needed to come pick up her things. She arrived with one of her friends from the night before, looking disheveled and broken. There was no more tears or pleas, just a resigned acceptance that this was the end. I watched as she loaded her stuff into her car, and when she was done, she handed the keys to the place we once shared and told her it was over for good. I said I was selling the place. During this process, Kelsey did ask for a share of the money from the sale of the house. She argued that, despite everything, she had contributed to our life together and deserved something for her efforts. I knew she might try this, so I had already consulted a lawyer. My lawyer advised me that, since her name wasn't on the deed and she hadn't made any financial contributions towards the mortgage or the down payment, she didn't have any legal claim to the money. Still, I wanted to avoid a prolonged dispute, so I offered her a small sum as a goodwill gesture, enough to help her move on, but not enough to feel like I was being taken advantage of. Kelsey reluctantly accepted the offer, probably realizing she didn't have much of a choice. The real estate agent had lined up some viewings, and within a few weeks, we had an offer on the house and I accepted it right away. I used the proceeds from the sale to secure a new place for myself, far away from the city where Kelsey lived and closer to my family. And now I'm here, I'm in therapy, I'm working on me, I'm going to the gym, I'm not quite ready to start dating again, and I'll never buy another place with a chick that I can't trust, or who has broken my trust ever again. I'm trying to heal the old wounds. My family, again, has really supported me throughout all of this, and I couldn't thank them enough. Thanks for listening to me ramble on, guys. Sharing this has been cathartic for me, and I genuinely hope it can offer some comfort or perspective to anyone going through similar struggles. For now, I'm planning my next trip to Europe. Maybe it'll heal this old dog. You left home at 18 to carve out a life for yourself, diving headfirst into the demanding world of trades. You made it, bought a house, and treated yourself after a childhood of scarcity, an impressive feat in itself. But then life threw you a curveball with a work injury that led to an addiction of opiates and eventually cocaine. Hitting rock bottom like that is no small ordeal, but you clawed your way back with the help of your supportive family. Getting sober was a monumental change, and you did it. Just when you thought things were looking up, you meet Kelsey, the human embodiment of a dumpster fire. What started as a passionate, albeit turbulent, relationship turned into a maze of deceit and heartbreak. 
from her flirting while still with another guy to the on again off again cycle that kept you hooked. It was a masterclass in emotional whiplash. Your trip to Europe provided a brief, beautiful escape, but coming back to the tangled mess with Kelsey must have felt like a cruel joke. Sorry to break it to you, but I don't think there was ever a future there. Your relationship with Kelsey sounded like a twisted game of emotional roulette where the odds were always stacked against you. From the moment she flirted while still with another guy to the bombshell revelations of ongoing infidelity, it's clear that trust and honesty were never on the table. Now, as you focus on healing and rebuilding, it's important to remember that closure doesn't always come wrapped in a neat package. Sometimes it's messy and painful, but it's necessary for growth. You deserve a future filled with honesty, trust, and genuine love. Something that was never on the cards with Kelsey. What would you have done differently? Share your thoughts with us in the comments below. And thank you for joining us today on Our Space. Be sure to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on our next video. See you next time.